Hello guys, uh, welcome all of you to today's farmcast and today we'll discuss another five drugs of choice and a question which was asked by a student is marrow cubank sufficient or do I need to solve some more questions so I'll discuss that at last let us straight away begin with our drugs of choice for today guys the first disorder is endemic mycosis like histoplasmosis or blastomycosis etc for these what is the drug of choice which antifungal is preferred guys your clue is it is an azole so is, is it uh, fluconazole is it atraconazole is it voriconazole posaconazole which one is preferred guys think guys for endemic mycosis the universal drug of choice is atraconazole except for cochidoidal meningitis in cochidoidal meningitis we prefer fluconazole so that is one thing you need to remember now moving on to the second uh, disorder that is enterobacter for enterobacter what is the drug of choice guys Enterobacter is a difficult organism to treat. So you know, for most gram negatives, we use ceftriaxone, except few. And it is one of those few where ceftriaxone is not effective, right? So here the drug of choice is, is, think guys, if third generation cephalosporins are not active against gram negatives, then what do we use? If you remember, we use carbapenems, right guys? So enterobacter drug of choice are carbapenems, but with the advent of uh, fourth generation cephalosporins like cefepime and cefpirome, these are effective. So remember third generation, they are not effective, but fourth generation, these are the only cephalosporins which are active against enterobacter. Even fifth generation, they are not effective, right? So cefepime and cefpirome, they are active against enterobacter, but the drug of choice are carbapenems. So if carbapenems is not in the answer, uh, not in the options, then go for either cefepime or cefpirome. Now moving on to the third disorder for today guys, it is enterococcus, so enterococcal infection. Now remember enterococcus can be of two types, right? Fecalis or fascium. Now fecalis is sensitive to penicillin, so here the drug of choice is ampicillin, but fascium is resistant to penicillin, so here the drug of choice is vancomycin. Now remember guys, for treatment of enterococcus, what we do is to these drugs which are active on the cell wall that is ampicillin, vancomycin, all of you know it is these are cell wall active agents. We combine a sidal, sidal drug that acts upon protein synthesis. Which one is that? Does it ring a bell guys? Which drug acting upon protein synthesis is bactericidal? It is aminoglycoside. So aminoglycoside significantly increases the efficacy of uh, cell wall active agents. So many a times we combine aminoglycosides with these cell wall active agents like your even cephalosporins. If you remember uh, to ceftazidim we combine aminoglycosides for pseudomonas and so on, right? So remember fecalis, ampicillin, fascium, vancomycin to make a regimen combine an aminoglycoside like gentamicin or streptomycin. Moving on guys to the fourth disorder for today. What is the drug of choice for ESBL producing organisms? ESBL, you know what is ESBL? Extended Spectrum Beta Lactamase. It's an easy one, guys. So ESBL producing organisms, drug of choice is carbapenems. Now, it might be possible they won't give you carbapenems in the options. Rather, they will give you a penicillin plus a beta lactamase inhibitor. So think, which penicillin plus beta lactamase inhibitor is preferred for ESBL organisms guys it is piperacillin tazobactam so in your options whenever they ask you regarding ESBL producing organisms search for carbapenems not in the option not, a, not an issue go for piperacillin tazobactam right here I would like to take the opportunity to, to discuss about uh, a more aggressive variant of beta lactamase that is called as metallo beta lactamase and one of the examples is NDM New Delhi metallo beta lactamase guys remember there are only two classes of drugs which are active against metallo beta lactamases producing microorganisms. And which are these two drugs? Think. I want you to think, guys. Do you know the answer? Now, if you know the answers and I can match to what I'm going to say, these two drugs which are active are tegacycline and cholestin. Right, guys? Tegacycline, cholestin. These are the only two drugs active against New Delhi uh, metallo beta lactamases producing organisms. Now guys, we have come to the last disorder for today, that is esophageal cancer. Now I've discussed it time and again. If it is upper GIT cancer, esophageal and gastric, what is the drug of choice, guys? The drug of choice is cisplatin. If it is lower GIT cancer, colorectal or anal cancer, what is the drug of choice? 5-fluorouracil. Clear? 
So drug of choice for esophageal cancer is cisplatin. Now if I want to make a regimen for upper GIT cancer like esophageal or gastric, what I do, I'll take the drug of choice for upper GIT cancer and add the drug of choice for lower GIT cancer that is 5 norovirasil So regimen of choice for esophageal cancer or gastric cancer becomes cisplatin plus 5 fluorouracil So guys that's all from the section of drug of choice for today and as you guys had asked me to discuss at least uh, one anti-cancer drug right every day so I I'm discussing the most important ones right so, uh, so that not to overburden you with each and every anti-cancer drug so whatever are the important ones I will cover uh, in these farmcasts so undoubtedly one of the important drugs is methotrexate methotrexate all of you know is an inhibitor of DHFR competitive inhibitor of dihydrofolic acid reductase and it falls under a subclass called as anti-metabolite and obviously guys it interferes with the DNA synthesis means methotrexate is an S phase specific drug methotrexate is a widely used drug not only in cancer it is also used in non neoplastic disorders so cancer or neoplastic disorders guys three important cancers there are many but three I would like you to remember at least drug of choice for choriocarcinoma drug of choice for carcinomatous meningitis and it is one of the first line drugs used for osteosarcoma but in osteosarcoma we need very high doses of methotrexate right whereas non neoplastic uses it is drug of choice for rheumatoid arthritis it is drug of choice for psoriatic arthritis now remember psoriatic arthritis mild to moderate cases major chunk of cases are mild to moderate where we use methotrexate but if it is a severe case of uh, psoriatic arthritis methotrexate might not give us adequate benefit there i would go for a tnf alpha inhibitor like infliximab right um, it is also used in gvhd graft versus host disease plus it can be used in ectopic pregnancy so these are the uses which are very important for methotrexate and if you are appearing for pgi these uses are important because you know in pgi they give you multiple options and even in aims and gipma and neat exam they do ask you regarding methotrexate guys the side effect of methotrexate are even more important as compared to uses so the dose limiting toxicity of anti-cancer drugs as well as for methotrexate is bone marrow suppression and to prevent this bone marrow suppression we prophylactically give, give the patient folinic acid that is also known as leucovarin or we can also give folic acid now folinic acid is better as compared to folic acid effectiveness wise but price wise folic acid is better because it is much much cheaper as compared to folinic acid so either of these can be given guys second uh, important side effect is hepatotoxicity methotrexate is hell of a hepatotoxic drug even it can cause cirrhosis but you need to remember it will not cause cirrhosis in patients of cancer why because the duration for which it is given to cancer patients is limited and you need long-term exposure for cirrhosis and which happens in chronic disorders like rheumatoid arthritis means what long-term use is important for cirrhosis and it is most commonly cirrhosis is seen when it is used for rheumatoid arthritis the third and the last toxicity guys it is nephrotoxic as well what it causes is crystal urea right now remember how to decrease that crystal urea methotrexate is an acidic drug so how can i decrease how can i decrease crystal urea think general pharmacology acidic drug i make the urine alkaline by giving bicarbonate the drug becomes ionized water soluble and it will not precipitate there would be no crystal urea so that's all guys from this anti-cancer drug uh, which i had to discuss today finally we have come to the last section of farmcast where i discuss one of your doubts and uh, today's doubt is a simple one indeed guys for me um, to answer you that is uh, is marrow cube bank sufficient or do i need to solve some more questions from other resources the answer uh, is simple and I'd like to answer it in the form of a saying which is in Hindi right so in Hindi there is a very good saying and that is Raita utna failao jitna samet saku so I always tell this to the students in my class and I know many of you don't know Hindi and you would like me to translate it but believe me translating this sentence is a Herculean task still I will try um, spread the curd as much as you can recollect right so that's all I can do here and I'll tell you the essence of this uh, Hindi saying. It means that guys, time is limited. Time is limited and you have to draw a line, right? So read or study that much of information which later you can revise, right? If, if, I, if I study too much, if I do too much things, 
and later I cannot revise those things, then it is of no use. Which means what, guys? That you have to draw a line that I I don't I won't cross this line, and whatever I need to do, it is within these boundaries. So in short, Mero Q Bank is more than enough because sometimes overdoing things can be counterproductive. So guys, be focused and stick to your plans. In these last months before your exam, do not try any new stunt, guys. It will be counterproductive. So believe in whatever resources you have, right? And now focus on how to execute your revision because, guys, remember uh, the last step, right? Revising, revising is the most important part of any any preparation. If you are not adequately revising, then it is as good as not preparing for the exam. Are you getting my point? So guys, that's all for today. And if you have any doubts like these, you can uh, to your preparation, you can always let me know in the comment box, and I'll try to incorporate your doubts in one of my next farmcast, guys. So take care. Bye bye. This was Dr. Ranjan with you.